Hello, everybody. How are we today? Good morning. Good morning. Super excited to see you all. Okay. Just giving time for everyone to come in. If you want to come on camera, great. Nice to see some of your beautiful faces again. Okay. Again, like I said yesterday, you can always tell who our students are or world students. <laughs> they are the ones that without fail come on a camera. Exactly, right? They're the one on video. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Hello. Nice to actually see your face, Jean. Jean, I'm probably messing up your name every time I say it. I apologize. I've heard it two so different ways. I've had students with it said two different ways, so I'm sorry. Okay. Where are we located? Into the chat. Now that we actually get to like see you and it's not just the live where we're talking, like it's really cool to see some of your faces that have been following us for a while. But I would love to know where we're located. We have Pittsburgh, we have Texas, Virginia, Phoenix, Nova Scotia. Oh, fun. Atlanta, Georgia, Hope Sound, Orlando, Minneapolis, Texas. Awesome. Okay. Sunny California, Texas, lots of Texans. <laughs> okay, Laura, are you ready? Yep. Okay. So great. Okay, I mean, I was. It's like I'm traveling for you for all these different areas that I see. So for the ones of you that don't know, uh, Liz and I. Well, first of all, we're a mother and daughter team, and we are located in South Florida. I'm on the east side of uh, Florida near Fort Lauderdale. Liz is on the west side near Fort Myers. So you can kind of geographically know where we are. And uh, uh, yeah, um, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it. How many of you are excited to know a little bit what is going on or what is going to be happening in real estate over the next uh, few years? Ooh, or, uh, you know, have, a, Sorry. have a, an idea about that. Anybody excited? Yeah, I'm mentioning St. Louis because Laura and I, well, one, I was raised there, but Laura and I, our big business is there, is in St. Louis. So you're in a good spot there as well. Okay. Okay. So this is something that, you know, I always have a pulse on what is going on here because it's so important to know so we can position ourselves as real estate investors on what to do in the following, you know, month uh, right now and then the following few years. Don't you agree? So I want to bring up here very quickly the agenda. So you know what we're going to be talking about and then we're going to jump into it. So I'm going to share my screen here very quick. And uh, let me see. So we're going to talk about what is happening in real estate market right now. The, the three top emerging strategies. How does this all apply to you as a real estate investor? And finally, your action plan. How are you going to put this together so you can move forward? Okay. So um, one of the things I talk about, let's talk about what is happening in the real estate market right now. And I'm going to take off the screen share because I want you to kind of see more and communicate with me. Um, <clears throat> like I said, you know, we have a good pulse on what is going on with real estate. And just to give you a little bit of background for the ones of you that don't know me, or if you maybe you know me, but you don't know why I think I can talk about this, is that I've been in real estate for 37 years, almost 40 years, guys, four decades. And I've been there through different times in history, in the economy. I've been there through recessions and changes. Think about it. I was there when Gulf War happened. I was there in the 80s when the interest rates were 16%. I owned properties back then, rentals, by the way, and still cash flow. I was there when 9-11 uh, happened as a real estate investor. I was there when 2007, the housing crisis happened. I was there when COVID happened, right? So the thing is, I found through going through these stages, I had to reinvent myself. And when I got caught, and like everybody else, I think the only time I kind of you know, doubted myself was in 2007 with the housing crisis. And because one of the things that happened, and that's why you always have to stay abreast of what's going on as far as news and technology. But one of the things happened, if you remember 2007, 
Facebook was at his infancy, social media, we had MySpace. Some of you might remember that, right? And so uh, there was a lot of talk, a lot of people coming up and just thinking they were giving gurus, you know, news and recommendations. Oh, stay away, real estate is bad. But I didn't think about that once this stuff happened, you know, the best thing you can do as a real estate investor is to reinvent yourself. There is more money to be made, opportunities to be made when there are changes in the economy and in the world than any other time because investors have to take advantage of this opportunity, right? Think about COVID 2020. So the thing is we had a group of uh, quote unquote gurus out there that decide, oh, you know, get away from real estate. I'm gonna sell and get into Amazon right now because everything is gonna go online and this and that. When 2020, if you invested in real estate, you would already double your equity right now. Liz bought a house in 2020 and her house is worth twice of what she bought and she got a 2.5 interest rate. The thing is, it's like that. You have to understand when 2007 happened, like I said, you know, I kind of took a step back because I got caught in the frenzy of everybody else. But if I had got into right away, when I did finally my light bulb went off and I realized what was going on, I said pre foreclosure preventions, short sales. So I started going out there and helping people to stop foreclosures, loan modifications, and short sales. It made even more money than before. When 9-11 happened, and I hate to say, you know, with that happening, unfortunately, but 2002 was probably one of the, my best years in real estate up to that point. This is where I went into a lot of private investment syndication. This is where I got into some grants. The city was helping revamp areas. They want to get people confidence up. So there was a lot of money available from the government to do things with. So think about it. When things happen, you have to just restructure how you think. That's all. And, you know, like what Warren Buffett says, be greedy when everybody's fearful and be fearful when everybody's greedy. And so if you thought that the last year or two were the best year to invest in real estate, it's not. Now, moving forward, it's going to be the best time to invest in real estate. But the thing is, last year was good for certain things. The year before was good for other things. So you have to understand and, you know, uh, how to move forward and how to reinvent yourself, and you're gonna be always ahead of the game. So with that said, let's get into um, some of the things that I see happening here that's gonna influence real estate greatly over the next year to five years, okay? Uh, a couple of things is, uh, first of all, let me clear this up. There is not gonna be housing crisis or bursting housing bubble. We're not going to see the foreclosures and everything else for 2007. Why is that? Because it's much different right now. The financial markets are different. <clears throat> They're much healthier. There is a lot of money that have globally been moved more than were 15 years ago. Okay. The banks learned from that experience. They're not going to put themselves in the situation again. So it's a different market. The other thing that's happened is the foreclosures. A lot of people, yeah, of course, there are always gonna be situations that people are gonna let things go. But the people right now is different. Properties values have appreciated so much that there is such equity in properties. And people are much more educated about selling real estate or selling properties that they were 15, 20 years ago when they were letting things go. There is a lot more help there. The banks, like I said, have learned a lot from it. So they're gonna work with people more instead of letting people go and lose their houses to foreclosures. You know, they approach you with loan modification. They approach you about restructuring loans or forbearance agreement. Things that 15, 20 years ago that nobody knew about. But people have learned, banks have learned the different possibilities. Right? So that's the thing is we're not gonna see foreclosures here being prominent, period. So if anybody here thinks oh, I'm gonna wait for the next foreclosure, you're gonna be waiting a long time. It's not gonna happen anytime soon, okay? Which is a good thing because that means the economy is healthy, everything is healthy. 
Now, as far as prices of the houses, we're not going to see a big adjustment in prices. Why? Well, a couple of things. First of all, there is a limited inventory. The population in the United States over this last year went up 1.6 million population-wise. New people. They came in beside the regular births and everything else. This is due to immigration. This is due to other things. And also population shifted. There's a couple of states that have seen more people moving into the states than anywhere else. And you want to guess which ones they are? I want to see in this chat. You want to guess which ones they are? And they're, they're seeing the most of this 1.6 million. Okay. Uh, Florida and Arizona, Idaho. Okay. Uh, Florida and Texas are the two states I've seen most of this population shift. Okay. Northeast has lost population. People are migrating south. Trust me, I, li I live in Florida. I see. Everybody from New York seems like I live here now. So that's the thing is... Um, there is going to be, there is population. The other thing is there is more people, aging population, okay? There are more people that are older than people coming in newer. Millennials entering the market, okay? Millennials right now, look at this, you know? They want to be homeowners. They're entering the market more and more. The sellers... Right now, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say seller. Property owners are now becoming sellers because they're holding on to their properties because most of them bought them when they were 4% interest rates, 3% interest to 2.5% interest, right? That's the thing, you know? People have bought the properties when they were lower interest rates. So unless you go through some major life change right now, you really don't want to move. I'm moving. I have an interest in my mortgage right now at this house where I am, 4.2%. Trust me, it's hard for me to think I'm going to jump into a 6, I think it's mine, 6.8, the new mortgage I'm taking. So, but, you know, I want to move so bad, you know, this <laughs> is so moving. But the thing is, I'm still staying here. I'm only, only moving like 30 minutes away. But the thing is, it's like, that's the thing that's happening. So people are holding on to their property more and they're having harder time selling a bit, a harder time because they don't want to sell. So that limits the inventory, okay? Um, so the other thing is actually the uh, living costs are going up higher, you know? And so people are saying, okay, my housing expenses can be only so much because I have living expenses. So again, that tends pe people not to be as mobile as they used to be years ago. They tend to be staying more where they are because their um, houses are, you know, obviously more affordable. Interest rates. Interest rates are crawling down, okay? And that's something we're going to be seeing here moving more and more in that direction. So that's something that is going to be on the positive side of things. Um, the other thing is, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm looking at my notes, guys, so I want to uh, make sure I don't miss uh, anything. Okay, rents. The rents are stabilizing. This is one thing that is not going to go up. They're not going to go down, but they're stabilizing. They're going to go down a little bit, actually. Okay. So that's something because we're going to see a lot of more rental supply in the market. One other thing that happens because of COVID is that a lot of people are start working more remotely. And they're going to stay remotely. There is more of a hybrid type model for working now where, you know, they don't have to go to the office as much. Or maybe they go there for meetings, but then the rest of the time they work from home. And this is a trend that's going to happen, which it's created a um, crisis for the uh, office building industry. Okay. Office space, actually buildings that are housing office space have gone down as much as 40% on their value. So now there is a new trend of thinking how to reutilize. You know, I don't know if you, some of you remember in the 80s, there was this big, uh, I know New York especially, there was this big thing about work living spaces. Okay, so they would build these buildings where you actually worked and lived in the building, right? Half of the building was offices, the other half was uh, residences. And I, we're seeing something going towards that as well. So they're going to try uh, to migrate more to 
co-working, living uh, office communities where you have this building that used to be all offices. Now they're going to change a lot of these to lofts or living spaces and maybe leave some floors for working co-working communities. So there is a lot of that. So redevelopment construction right now is going to become important because we're going to take and reutilize a lot of these spaces. So this is all kind of shifts that we, we are seeing here, right? And uh, so it's a lot of changes, don't you agree? Now, the other thing, so that to make this even more interesting is technology and AI, okay? Artificial intelligence and AI. And uh, this is really taking real estate by storm. People can basically buy the houses remotely. You know, they have, um, you know, this technology, they come into your house and they put in all these cameras around your house, do 3D tours of your house, have drones going around your house. And all this is packaged that people can buy a house site unseen. Okay. So that's the thing we're going to see. So I know I threw a lot of information here at you guys. So what are your thoughts, Liz? What? You want to add something to this? I mean, yeah, I you kind of took all the parts I was going to talk. But one of the things I want to say is as far as AI and virtual, that's the way to go right now. You do not have to stay where you are. And this is a huge mindset shift. I do virtual all over the country. All of my coaches do, except for one or two of them. And this is where it's shifting. And I tell people this all the time. It does not matter your age. There are tools out there that help you. But you want to get ahead of the game or you're going to fall behind. And AI is where it's going. They have, they're making AI where they will cold call for you. That's a game changer. You don't have to pay for assistance to call anymore. They have AI where they can go in and tour for you at any given time. You should see the photos and videos they're doing now of like Laura's house that she's trying to sell and stuff like that. The drone footage of you actually walking through it. Again, this is really, really good because this saves you money as a business owner. This saves you money from having to pay for a boots on the ground. Think about this, right? And so it's really great. It will help with like, the efficiency and transactions and making sure that your lead generation and your marketing is up to date. What is going on? You can use AI to find out any answer you need and things that like, as far as like, what should, you know, what should I do here? Stuff like that. Now it's different because it takes out the human approach. And one of the things I talk about with my coaches is like, okay, you know, you still have to be a person in this business. It's going to help with like the marketing aspects of things. It's going to help making it easier for you, but you have to still put yourself into this. And when sellers are having conversations with you, you need to be able to answer and you need to help. So where people are worried that AI is going to take away all jobs, it can't because sellers aren't going to work with a robot. Think about it. Would you sell your house to someone that was robotic and animated and stuff like that? Hell no. I don't care if you want the house or not. You're not going to. And that's why I wanted to show a little bit about that and talk a little bit about that is that you can have all this happening for you and working for you. But there are still pieces of you that need to be in this business. And that's why 2024, it's going to be a game changer for those of you in the real estate industry because AI is coming in full force. And you want to be able to get ahead of that and know how to get ahead of that and know how to run these systems and that make sure that you are there to keep that running. Because at the end of the day, I tell Laura all the time, I thank her for me getting in when I did and learning the bare bones. Because all it takes is for people to swipe technology from you and that will eliminate 99% of the investors out there that solely rely on it. You could even do virtual without the internet. It is possible. And that's why knowing the bare bones, knowing what to do at all times, you will always be able to reinvent yourself. So 2024 is coming in hot. It's coming in with a lot of exciting things that are coming out. 
And these are shifting. These are shifting in the market for 2024. And that's why you want to stay ahead of the game. Did I miss anything, Laura? Okay. Great. So with all this has said, was this actually, I always see changes as good news because the thing is with real estate, you know, it can get stale after a while. You know, you, you're doing the same things and yeah, of course it works, it makes money, but it gets boring to me. I like these changes. I like the way you're reinventing myself because the thing is when this happens, there are new opportunities. And that's why you want to stay in a way that you know what is next. You know, that's why I am so, um, I feel so blessed that we are in a group of like this, a community like this, and we have some amazing coaches that stay ahead of what is going on out there in the world. And that's why we're going to talk about now what I feel the three top strategies are. And honestly, we are some of the first uh, coaches out there or community that talk about these some of these strategies. It was brought to our attention that they're starting to talk some of these that you in real meetings nationwide, but they're at the infancy where we already jumped on the bandwagon a while back. So I'm going to bring up the slides here just to keep it the train of thoughts. And uh, let me see, share my screen. Okay. So um, the three top emerging strategies. Okay, number one is virtual real estate. We talked about uh, AI and we talked about uh, you know technology. Liz, you want to talk a little more about virtual? How you see this happening in sure. for the real estate? Well, I I'm going to use because I'm seeing it as a current example now. Laura's house. Um, her agent, even on the agent side of things, she drives an hour to show the house and people are not showing. Okay. People are not showing up and she drove an hour there. She's driving an hour back. People like that get burned and they get tired. And I say it all the time as an investor, when I have to do in the field work, mostly so the students can understand, they're like, absolutely not. I'm, I am like, no, this is way too much work. And I have ladies that are like, I'm really worried though, because I'm not tech savvy. There are ways to do virtual without using a bunch of tech, but you do have to have some tech. You have to have some. It makes your life a million times easier. But I I can't dive deep into that now, but for students, if you're interested in the virtual without internet, we can talk about it, okay? But virtual REI, I see it becoming a thing because if you notice, people less and less have respect for other people's time. And like this agent, She's showing all these houses to people that aren't showing up. And so virtual, bringing in the AI, bringing in the tools, bringing in all of that, you can do that. And it, it's becoming more and more popular. The people that I see um, doing this on a big scale, they do it because it, they want it around their lifestyle. When I started investing and doing it completely in vir virtual, it's because I didn't want to have to drive to house to house. I didn't want to have to deal with traffic. I lived in Fort Lauderdale, which is like damn near it competes with uh, LA traffic, I swear. And I didn't want to deal with that anymore. And so to me, it was really, really important that I was able to invest without running to different places and showing homes and relying heavily on like in-person teams where I couldn't go and live a life I wanted to live. I couldn't be here and coach. I couldn't do those things if I had to do everything in person. So you have to figure out how important it is. But I'm telling you, if you want to stay ahead of the game, you want to beat the other competition, quote unquote, out there, there has to be a virtual aspect to your business so that you can move faster in 2024. Because now they have bots. They have things that are scanning things for other investors. They have people, and I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying because you want to be ahead of the game so that you don't get pushed out. And that's where virtual, and this is a great thing. This is a good thing because you can do a lot more. You can do a lot more with a lot less work. Um, I want to tell you guys a couple of things technology wise about virtual. Um, first of all, you can, there are software, there is a platforms out there 
where you can do everything virtually down to doing a fix and flip, right? You have these type of technology that can go inside houses and basically give you information, everything inside the house, better than a building inspector could. And so you can do this virtually. The other thing is as far as having internet everywhere, there is big leaps and bounds we're gonna be seeing. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Elon Musk, you know, the guy from Tesla that or SpaceX that is actually looking to build a net all around the earth where we can have internet from everywhere, everywhere. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, that uh, right now there is satellite technology. I have a friend of mine, he sails around the world literally sails around, he has a sailboat and he sails around the world and he can get internet anywhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you know, through from his sailboat. Uh, there is an RV right now that is out there, be looking at it, it's uh, actually $300,000 RV. I still have an issue buying $300,000 for an RV, but it's a, it's a travel trailer, but it's called Bolus, B-O-W-L-U-S, which is kind of similar to Airstream, but it has built in to get internet anywhere with satellite technology, okay? So it's really, really out there right now that pretty much anywhere on earth, if you're willing to pay, it's a little more expensive, but you can get internet from everywhere. And like I said, there are tools out there that can actually get inside the houses and give you such data that is better than you know, sending somebody boots on the ground or an inspector. So virtual REI is gonna take leaps and bounds here the next few years, we just see the infancy of it. Okay. Now I want to go into innovation. What is innovation? We're some of the first coaches in the country actually teaching about this. Innovation is basically, we cannot get into a lot of detail here, but it has been a game changer. And we okay. have training on this for our students this Friday. So they are actually going to learn and like they know just from conversations, but they're actually having a whole training built on innovations because this is the hottest way to land deals in 2024. Right. So innovation is basically where you create a partnership with the seller to sell the property. Okay. And it's done in such a clever way that actually with innovations, you make more money than double closings or assignments or anything else. And you make money on properties where there is no equity. So if the seller wants to stop on the market with innovation, you actually make more money. You know, we have students right now using innovation, making anywhere from twenty to fifty thousand dollars per deal using innovations. Okay, so super good strategy. Um, alternative financing. What is this? Remember when I said that we have more money coming in global than anywhere, any time in history. There is a lot of money here that's coming to United States from Europe, South America, Middle East, and so forth. To the point that we as a community, as women, we are going to spend globally. That's a, one of the, our goals is because that I when I go to Italy, I talk with women there that where do you think they want to put their money? They want to put their money here. Why here? Why in America? Because is a safer bet, okay? Um, I am from Italy originally. That's where I grew up, if you wonder about my accent by now. But the thing is, I know, I knew firsthand, as soon as I landed in the United States in 1985, I saw the opportunities here. I saw the money. I saw the dynamic, the energy, okay? And as much as, you know, you feel we all have our issues with, politics and everything else is going on in the country, right? And every country has. By the end of the day, um, our countries have a lot more issues, especially when it comes to money. They have no problems taking the money away from you, shutting down your bank accounts and you lose your money, okay? So that's the thing that you have to think. The people, it's like, think of South America with all the political stuff they're having. They wanna invest their money here, okay? So that's the thing you have to think about. So what does alternative financing mean? It means tapping into these resources of private money and joint venture partnerships. There are companies out there that pull together their money. I've been approached by many of these companies from South America and Europe saying we have 
millions and millions of dollars to invest in real estate. We're looking for investors. We're looking for people that can find properties. We want to form joint ventures. We're looking for people for constructions, redevelopment. We have the money. And they don't care about your credit. They don't care about where you're coming from. They want to create partnerships. So this is something that we're seeing more and more coming in. And that's why we, as a community of women in real estate, want to expand more to Negro because why not work with women all over the world and be their boots on the ground here in America to invest in real estate? Which brings me to a bonus point here of emerging strategy, which is um, there, construction, okay? Like I said, a lot of the spaces, commercial spaces are gonna be redeveloped and they're gonna be put into more like working, living spaces. And there are gonna be new, pro new homes being built. There is also a lot of grants coming in from the government right now for this as well. So the construction fat area is gonna really be booming here in the next few years. So I know this is a lot to think about. I wanna hear some of your thoughts, guys. What, the, what do you think? Any comments, any questions? Because I know we threw a lot at you. Was this interesting? Was this eye-opening in any way? Let's hear from you. Anything new that you would like to contribute to what we just said? Maybe we overwhelm them so much. <laughs> okay. okay. There's so, some questions. So uh, not... Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let's read what they said, and then we'll go into a QA. and a Okay. So it's very eye-opening, very interesting, amazing. Got to make new friends in construction. Uh, a confirmation on what I've been hearing. Super interesting. International private money and construction grants is new info to me. Yeah, you always bring value, stuff like, good, good, good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go into Q and A here in a second, but I wanted to extend to you actually an invitation, and I'm gonna bring up here a slide so that uh, we kind of keep you focused here for a moment, and then we're gonna get into Q and A here. Um, hold on. Let's see, I'm technically challenged. <laughs> That's one the thing with technology. I don't know how I'll be doing. Um, but even me with challenge technology, I'm going to be doing So with that said, we are going to book your strategy session. And this during the strategy session, you're gonna, we're going to talk about your situation, what you're looking to do, and how to capitalize on the shifting market conditions. So, you know, you're going to be talking with Faith. She's here with uh, our team today. You see her on the screen on video. And she's going to give you some tidbits on how this pertains to you. Because at the end of the day, how does this apply to you as a real estate investor, right? Well, let me talk about that for a second. So there are three main strategies to real estate, okay? Wholesaling, buy and hold, and fix and flip. Let's talk about wholesaling. Wholesaling, you need to do this 100% virtually, guys. There is no reason for you to go to look at the properties because you're really selling a contract, you're not selling a property. With that said, with technology that we have even right now and moving forward with AI, you can totally sell a property anywhere in the United States while you live anywhere in the world. That's why I'm opening this up to women from all over the world because they can wholesale. I actually already work with women in Europe that are wholesaling here in the United States. There are laws here in place to allow you to invest in real estate in the United States, even if you're from abroad. There is also a law that if you invest in the United States, you can get a green card, a visa here to, in the United States. So there are a lot of things already in place. So if you're wholesaling, totally can do it virtually. You should, even if you're selling the house down the street, why go there, right? If you're doing buy and hold and rentals, people are more shifty, are more dynamic. Airbnb, short-term rentals, 
uh, midterm rentals. You know, it, it's a really a culture right now. People that are shifting, working remotely, living anywhere around the country or in the world. So as a landlord, you have a very steady influx of people. We talked about that, right? And third and not least is construction, fix and flip, redevelopment. This is what we talked about, okay? So Liz, uh, you wanna add anything to that? No, I think that's great. We do cover a lot of that. Okay, so we put the link here on the chat for you to book a call. And uh, do you want to mention something here about, so the book a call is about really getting to know you, where you want to go, and giving you some in insights on how you can apply this to your real estate game and uh, really capitalize on this. And we want to give you an incentive for you guys that book a call. So Liz, you want to talk about that? Sure. So I was trying to think of what would be an incentive for those that book a call and decide to become eventually a student of ours, right? Because the the incentives, they can range from depending on what we're talking about, but also whatever exciting thing we have up our sleeve. So because we talked a lot about AI and artificial intelligence and things like that, for anyone that books a call while we are still on this workshop, and becomes a student, we will actually pay for your AI Speakly uh, setup, meaning that we have an AI program that goes through somebody that we are affiliated with. But instead of you paying for it, we will actually pay as a bonus to anyone that decides to join our program, um, their AI Speakly setup. So it's just something I wanted to offer for anyone that schedules a call while we're on. I know they're putting the link into the chat right now. And that's kind of just something I wanted to give back so that you don't have to worry about the setup part of it. Yeah, and this is actually a brand new thing that we're doing. And we're going to see more and more, like I said, don't, you know, even if you just say, you know, I just want to close the deal, right? I would just want to do a deal right now. But there are already tools and technology to make your things so much easier. Because I'm sure a lot of you decide to break into it because you want freedom, in the real estate, right? Freedom financially, freedom of time. I know for me, it was a freedom of time. That was my first incentive to get into real estate because I didn't want to be tied to a nine to five. And now you can literally live and travel anywhere in doing this. I mean, I started doing virtual back in the nineties, but honestly, it was harder to do that way. You know, nowadays it becomes, that's the way to do it. Like I said, even, regular listings of properties are more virtual. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing that we're moving. So this bonus is really great. And it's something that we are really embracing right now, even as investors to do things virtually and li live the life that you want. So go ahead and, one and of the, call. And we one can of the things you. is, is once you book, um, Faith will send you a video where I actually break down the different systems of a real estate investing business and everything you need before you even get on the call. So you'll actually get like a breakdown of what a real estate investing business looks like to successful investors so that you have that as well. So there is some fun involved in booking that too. Okay. Okay. Let's get some Q and A right now and uh, see what question we have. So maybe the, you know, give us some more ideas on how we can help you. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we are going to take one question per person just because there are a lot of people on. And normally if we do this live, like during our group lives, we're on for only about 20 minutes. So we're definitely run past, but that's okay. So how does one manage a flip remotely? Laura, I'm I'm reading your answering. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to take that. That's how okay. I always do this. <laughs> okay. One of the advantages of to flip remotely? How, yeah, how does one flip remotely? How does one flip remotely? Well, that's, a, like I said, that's, you know, you have to have a, you know, a couple of people in place, right? The main one is a project manager, okay? So a project manager is basically your boots on the ground as far as uh, making sure construction is done properly and everything is, the contractors, everything falls into place. So you have to have a, a, a project manager and eventually maybe a pro property managers as well. 
Um, give you an example. I actually know this company out of California, and they do a lot of redevelopments and uh, fix and flips in St. Louis, Missouri. And they have a project manager they send out. Well, they have two. One is on St. Louis that supervises all their fix and flips going at one time. They have over 10 going at one time. And then they send one of them from California every three months to kind of see how things are going and then purchase the next wave of properties. So the company, they're located in San Francisco, but they send it. So you can do remotely if you have a project manager. Um, even with rentals, if some of you are interested in the Burr method, buy, rent, refine, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. That's what Burr stands for. Uh, we had a, a lady that bought 21 houses, never saw them, have them all fixed up remotely while she lived in Florida. And uh, she had a project manager and a property manager in Cleveland, Ohio. So that's all can be done remotely. We have boots on the grounds. So we're very fortunate to have boots on the ground. There's also a real estate agent that we work with and uh, one of our coaches as well. So that's how we do it. So you need to have somebody there that can help you supervise things. But at the end of the day, that's how it's done. Okay. And what's the technology you talked about that can give you information about the home without an inspector? Well, um, a few years ago, I remember Liz, we, we met some, uh, um, there were uh, AI innovators out in New York City and they were building this technology that basically it's like right now when they list properties in 3Ds, they go in the house and they have these cameras they put into different uh, parts of the house and it can give you a 3D view of the house, okay? Now they're coming up actually with certain camera that have sensors that basically have like X-ray visions and they can go inside inside the house and actually go through the walls and the plumbings and the systems and get around diagnostics based on that. So this is something that's still in the infancy. It's not widely available to everybody, but we're going to be seeing that becoming like mainstream here in the next few years. Yep. Awesome. Let's see what else. I think that's it as far as that. Wendy, we are going to, it's on our training list to bring to the students a little bit deeper on grants and stuff. We have training on grants and private money, but it's new to as far as bringing in international private money. So that's all coming to our students. It's on our list. It would solve a lot of problems, right? <laughs> awesome. Yay. Any more questions while you have us? Laura, anything else you want to say? Um, no, I mean, how many here uh, put in the chat to be interested to learn more about how to become part of the community and learn more about the strategies? Like I said, we have innovation. Every month we're going to dive deep into one of the new strategies. So obviously the students here get innovation this Friday. So how many here will be interested to learn more about, you know, diving deep into it and how it can really help you to... It's, it's going to be a very exciting time in, in, in the industry here to become a real estate investor over the next few years. I can tell you right now, the possibility here, and if you open your mind to the possibility, just think about it, to become a boots of the ground for somebody that lives in another country. You're here in the United States. Wouldn't you love to partner with a woman that's in the Middle East that have so much infinite money to invest? Trust me, these women have money. I went to Harrods in London and this woman was spending tens of thousands of dollars of designer clothes for kids, okay? These women have so much money, they're bored. They don't know what to do with. So what about partnering with, with women like that? Mm -hmm. and There's Italy, a lot of people mentioning they're interested in becoming a student. I don't know if we made it clear. There's a link in the chat where you can book and be able to talk to us about becoming a student. So if you're interested in learning deeper on this stuff, we actually reserve that for our students to get that knowledge. The deeps, the hows, the in-betweens, the what to do's, all of that. So that link in the chat that Faith is posting, that's the link you want to, to learn more on this. I wanna be that woman. Marina, same, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. We're getting there, right, Laura? But yep. I, I can't get past the morals of spending all that money on kid clothes that they're gonna grow out of in like a month. Like I'm still not on that level of abundance just yet where I feel like 
that wouldn't be a complete waste of money. But that's the kind of level of abundance I want to get to thinking wise is like, oh, let me go buy, you know, this $5,000 dress that my kid's going to wear once. So, yes. I know. Okay. You know, the thing is, honestly, uh, this poor woman, she seems so, her face, she was so unhappy. There's something obviously in her life that's not happening in other things. Just imagine empowering this woman to say, you have access to all this money do something. And next thing you know, you can also move to the United States because there is a, a law. Actually, I work with an attorney here. She's an international real estate. And what she does, she helps people establish their real estate business here in the United States. And I don't know if you guys are aware that if you invest at least $500,000 in real estate here in the United States, you can actually get a visa and a green card to live here. Do you know that? And I was like, wow. You know, so imagine so dollar... being, out, being out there shopping and you see these miserable people that are yeah. spending all this money, which <laughs> goes to show you money doesn't make you happy. But I say I'd much rather be miserable in a jet than otherwise. But you, know, <laughs> a jet. But you can go up there and actually talk to them and reproach you. Yes, I have, I have women that are that bold that will go up and say, hey, you know, I'm an investor. Let's have your money speak for you and make more money. Yeah. Right. So it's, you can do this. And we live in, um, we live where you can go to like sawgrass where everyone flies in to shop the sawgrass malls. They're walking around with the, uh, luggage and you, you can talk to women and bring up that kind of like opportunities to them. Yeah. In Italy, I have a friend, she's uh, my best friend. She's an architect over there. And, uh, you know, she knows all these people with all this money and guess what? They don't want to put their money in Italy. They want to put their money in America. It, and having a contact here, hammer contact, but you know, for you guys to have contacts like that with people there that wants to invest here, these people have infinite amount of cash. They want to invest. Is that one of the things I always joke in Italy is that it's amazing how the country can be so poor, but Italians can be so rich. You know, they all wear Armani suits and drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis, but then the country looks like it's going through all these some changes in the economy and, you know, because they embezzle money. But that's another thing, you know, government and mafia. But the thing is, there is a lot of money. That's why they don't want to put their money there. They want to put their money here. And trust me, they ask all the time. So to have that connections, to be there, to be open to those ideas, that's what we want to bring to the community. So if you want to really understand how to capitalize a market, what difference it makes to you, not a year or two years down the road, but now we're talking right now, just go ahead and talk to us, see what we can do and help you, you know, to really take this by storm because guys, we are at the verge of something amazing here. And uh, the ones of you that sees this opportunity now before everybody else sees it, it's going to be the ones that are going to capitalize the most. And that's one of the things is Lauren, I know, and can get a hold of people with a lot of money. And the people that we are going to give those referrals to are our students, just because obviously they are trained by us. So they are more like someone we can trust to run like our ladies' monies. So kind of keep that in mind that this is going to become a thing more and more. And I was there when Laura and I sat down with her friend in Italy and they were saying how much they can't stand Italian real estate and that they would much rather invest there. And that's when me and Laura kind of looked at each other and said, okay, well, let's make your money work for you. So we're actually in the, the trial test right now of doing it ourselves before we open up to students, being able to have this access to this kind of funds. But it's in one of those things that you can do as well. And just to keep that in mind, whether you're a student or not, that there are women out there, there are people out there that want to invest in the U.S. And maybe you even have people in your family that you just haven't thought about because they don't live here. Right? Yeah. How can we watch this Zoom meeting again? We will post the recording later on all the social medias. So you can go and find it on our social media. On our YouTube would probably be your best option, though. Okay, Laura, anything else? No, I think I told them enough. <laughs> I think you did. I mean, I really think like you, you, you overwhelmed him. But was this good information? Is this good to know? One of the comments I saw not too long ago, Wendy, I think it was you actually, not to call you out, but was that she was like, she's in other mentorships. And she says REIW is ahead of the game when it comes to this stuff. No one else is talking about this. Why? 
nobody else is doing it. And then they're doing all the competitive ways. They're not doing the innovative ways. And for you to become successful as an in investor, one, you need to follow mentors that are actively investing because they know what's going on. They know what's working. This is really, really showing. I say this on everything that you can tell who invests actively because they're ahead of the game. They're telling the students, this is what's working right now. This is how to separate yourself. Okay. Yeah. Other mentorships are trying to learn it so they can teach it. We're already teaching it. So thank you, Wendy. So that's one of the things is you want to understand how important it is to be ahead of the game. So you stay ahead of the game. How can I get an investor to help me get started? Like to get my 30 K to work with you and have skin in the game. I heard a, a you know a good uh, comparison analysis once. You know, actually, Dean Graziosi, when we went and met him in person down in Arizona, he said, you know, just imagine when Titanic was sinking, if you had been there selling people lifeboats. Okay, there were a lot of people with a lot of money on Titanic that died. Right, that's what he's famous for because you had all these elite of people that no matter what, even if they had all the money in the world they couldn't save themselves. So what if you are that person that's gonna sell these people their lifeboats? Don't you think you would have become rich right there and then if you were on the side of the Titanic selling lifeboats? And that's the thing you're doing here. You are spotting what's coming up next in the world, in real estate, and you're gonna be providing lifeboats for people. That's gonna make you rich beyond your dreams. That's the way you're gonna look at it. Sell lifeboats right now, guys. When 2007 happened and we had all this wave of foreclosure, there were people like me, they were making a ton of money from pre-foreclosures, but we were helping people. I was helping people. I wasn't telling them, oh, I'm just going to take your house so it doesn't go to foreclosure, give it to me. I was telling people, I was educating people. I says, you know, there are several ways you can stop a foreclosure. Okay, what are they? And I will go down the list. And then one of them was obviously me doing a short sale or doing a loan modification for them. You know, there was two of the seven. So a lot of time I would pick, but I was selling people life, lifeboats. So they didn't have to go to foreclosure. So think of it this way. What lifeboat are you going to sell to people? We gave you a few of them here today. We gave you the innovation. We get you alternative strategies. We gave you about getting into new constructions, partnering with people with money. We gave you the fact that the grants are opening up. Wouldn't you like to know which lifeboats you can sell to people? That's all the community is about. So I hope to see you. I hope you book a call that we can see, really get to know you on a personal level. I hope to help you sell your lifeboats. And, uh, and thank you for being here and listening to me. I just want to share one more thing. Liz got me the best gift ever a couple of Christmases ago, ago and is a crystal ball. And she said to me, I'm going to give you a crystal ball because you seem to also always see what is happening in the future. And I was like, it's because I've been in this business so long. I've seen the good and the bad and I have a good pulse on what's going on. And uh, yeah, so that's my crystal ball with you today. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for being with us today. <laughs> Bye.